What's up, I'm Van, and today I want to take a look at an AP Calculus Limit question that has taken many people's souls. It has taken students' souls and definitely some teachers' souls here. I know I lost a piece of my soul looking at this question. So we have a graph of f of x and g of x, and we want to know which of the following statements is false. And we have all these limit statements here. So just so I go through each answer choice as thoroughly as possible, I want to look at a sketch of all of the transformations here. So first I'm going to look at a transformation of f of x. I want to look at a sketch of f of x plus 1, which would be the result of moving this entire graph to the left one unit. So now everything would be happening here at the origin. We would have an open circle here, and our graph would be going up, down, and this is just a rough sketch, and it would come like this. And then what we have here is the function value would be defined here at the y value of 2. So that would be our maximum height, and then down here at negative 2 would be our minimum height. So this is just a rough sketch here of f of x plus 1. But now we're going to do that for the others. So we're going to look at g of x minus 1. And g of x minus 1 would be the result of shifting this graph to the right one. So if we did that, all of the action would be happening at x equals 1. So that would be the jump discontinuity in the graph at x equals 1. And we would be up here at y equals 2. We would be going down to minus 2 like this. And the graph would be opening up like this. So once again, all the action in this case is happening at x equals 1. And then the last piece I want to look at is g of x plus 1. And for this one, everything is going to be shifted to the left one. So now all the action is going to be happening at x equals negative 1. So the line would be up here at y equals 2 when we're less than or equal to negative 1. And then we'd have an open circle here, and we would be on the line y equals negative 2 when we're to the right of negative 1. So now we're ready to answer this limit. So the first two answer choices we could eliminate quickly. The limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is equal to 0. So we're on this graph here, and you could see when we approach from the left side and the right side, our limit is in fact approaching 0. So this would be a true statement. We want the statement that's false. So a is eliminated. And now for choice b, we have the limit as x approaches 0 of g of x does not exist. And if we look over here at the graph, as we approach 0 on the left side, we're heading to a y value of 2. And as we approach 0 on the right side, we're heading to a y value of negative 2. So since our left and right side limits don't match, our limit does not exist. So that's a true statement, which means we're eliminating this because we want the false statement. But then we get to choice C. And we have the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x times g of x minus 1. Well, if you look over here at the graph of f of x, the limit as x approaches 1 on the left and right, we're heading towards 0. But when you look at the limit as x approaches 1 and we're on the graph g of x minus 1, as we approach 1 from the left side and the right side, notice that the limit does not exist. So when you get here, you might look at this and say, well, 0 times does not exist would tell us that this does not exist. So then it has to be choice D because all the others here have been true so far. <laughs> But no, this is a very, very, very dangerous bear trap. Choice C has to be explored a little bit more. We could quickly rule out that choice D is in fact true. If we take the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x plus 1 over here, as we approach 0 from the left and right side, notice that our limit is equal to 0. And then if we look at the limit as x approaches 0 of g of x plus 1, as we get closer to 0 from the left and right side, notice that we're heading down here to a height of negative 2. So this is not the funny part of the graph where there's a jump. So we would just have 0 times negative 2 is equal to 0, which would, in fact, tell us our, our answer choice here has to be choice C. But how do we know that choice C is a false statement? Well, for this, if we really want to be 100% certain here, we're going to take the limit as x approaches 1 on the left side of f of x times g of x minus 1. And when we take the limit on the left side, notice what we get here. The limit as x approaches 1 on the left of f of x is still equal to 0. But then we're going to take the limit as x approaches 1 on the left of g of x minus 1. And on the left side, we're heading up to y equals 2. But 0 times 2 is just equal to 0. And now when we take the right side limit, the limit as x approaches 1 on the right side of f of x times g of x minus 1. In this case here, something interesting is going to happen. When we take the limit on the right side, notice for f of x, we're still heading to 0. And then when we look at g of x minus 1 on the right side, we're heading down to a height here at negative 2. But even though our left and right limits of g of x minus 1 are different, making that limit not exist, we're multiplying these constants by 0. So now we have a left and right side limit that are equal to 0, which tells us that the limit in general as x approaches 1 of f of x times g of x minus 1 would just be equal to 0. So then the limit as x approaches 1 does in fact exist. The limit exists and it's equal to 0. 